Hey everybody, welcome back to NetTouch Plus, and today we are going to be answering a form question on how to transition an image from black and white to color when you hover over it without using more than one image. How can we do that? How can you take one image and find a way to transition it from all black and white to its full color form? And we're going to take advantage of JavaScript and Canvas to allow for it. So let's get started. I'm going to go open my website's directory, and I've created a folder called gray color where we have a image we're going to use as well as the file. So let's go ahead and get started. And now as you can see here, I have a basic skin. So let's get started building our wrapper. So I'm going to create a div and we'll give it a class name of IMG wrap. Now within here, we're going to start with our base image and we called that Lionel.jpg. Okay, next let's create the canvas element. So we'll go canvas, width is gonna be 500 and the height is 500. Now these dimensions come from the image itself. The image I'm using is 500 pixels by 500. So I'm gonna go ahead and hard code that in here. And that's going to do it for our markup. So let's take a look at this in the browser. And sure enough, all we have right now is the image and the canvas, which you can't yet see. All right, so let's take this to the next step. Now we're gonna write our script and we're gonna keep this all on one page just for convenience. And next, Let's be good boys and girls and make sure that we don't have any extra global variables. And now, first, I want to detect whether or not the browser supports Canvas. And we can do this easily. So I'm going to write var supports Canvas. And this is going to be equal to document create element. We're going to create a Canvas element dynamically. And we're going to try to get the get context property. Now, we will only have access to that get context property if the browser supports Canvas and I'm going to proceed it with two exclamation points and that'll make sure that this value is turned into a Boolean. So now at this point, supports canvas will either be true or false, dependent upon whether the browser understands what get context is. Next, we need to call supports canvas. If that's true, then we'll say window.load equals gray images. This is shorthand for an if statement and we're saying if this is true, then window.load equals gray images. And we'll go ahead and write that function right now. Function gray images. Now you might be wondering why are we doing window.load at the bottom of the page? And it's because we need to be certain that everything is loaded and ready to go. And there are situations even at the bottom of the page where you will not have access to the canvas and to the images. So make sure you do this. Otherwise it's likely that it won't work. Okay, and within our gray images function, we need to first start by creating the context. So ctx, and this will be equal to document.getElements by tag name canvas. And I'm going to make sure I get that very first one it finds. And then we're going to call get context and we're going to get the 2D context. So we're doing it like this because we have not provided an ID to the canvas. So you might want to do that in your own project here. We're going to be general and just get all the elements that are canvas and then get that first one. So this now corresponds to this and we've gotten a 2D context. Next, let's make sure we declare all of our variables at the top of our function. That's a good practice. Next, we'll say image, and once again, document get element by ID CVS SRC. Let's go ahead and provide an ID to this image, ID equals CVS SRC. Next, we're going to define a handful more variables. This one will be called image data, pixel. Don't worry about these right now. We're gonna go over each of them, but I'm gonna go ahead and declare them at the very top. And then we have red, green, blue, gray. Now what we're doing here with red, green, blue is we're going to have to go pixel by pixel through the image and turn each one to grayscale. So next we're gonna call ctx.drawImage. So we're taking the canvas context and we're gonna draw an image. And what are we drawing? That image right here. Next, for the second and third parameter, we're gonna provide the coordinates. Zero, zero is fine, top left, right. And if I refresh the page, it looks like I'm not getting anything. So let's come back and there it is. Window, not load, on load. I'm sure you saw that. One more time. And now we have two identical images. One is our base image. The next one is the one we created with canvas. So now to this one, we want to manipulate it and make that grayscale. So next we're going to work with image data. And this is going to get the information about the image. So I'm going to call ctx context get image data. And here's where we specified the coordinates. So again, we wanna begin on the left top position and we wanna get 
500 by 500. So essentially here we're saying that entire canvas get that 500 pixel by 500 pixel area. Next, this pixel variable, we're going to receive all of the pixels. So the way you can get that is by calling image data and it has this data property available to it. Now what this is going to return is a huge string of values and it'll be red, green, blue, alpha, red, green, blue, alpha, red, green, blue, alpha. That's exactly how it's going to be returned. So now what we need to do is go through each of those values and convert them to grayscale. But lastly, let's do one last thing and pixel, we're gonna grab the total number of pixels. So we'll do pixel.length. In this case, it would be 500 times 500 would be the length, which is 25,000. All right, so now with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and filter through all of these pixels. So while i is less than length, i plus equals four. And the reason why we're doing plus four again is because we're going through red, green, blue, alpha, that's four, and then the next pixel, and the next pixel, and the next pixel. So we're gonna filter through all of these, each as a set, and each set is four characters long. So now we need to update each of the values. I wanna to go to the red and make that grayscale. Green, make that grayscale. The blue, make that grayscale. And then we'll skip alpha. Now there are formulas available around the web that you can use to convert RGB to grayscale. So let's find one right now. RGB to grayscale. And here we end up on stack overflow and this looks like it should be fine. So I'm going to paste this in right now. And we can say the output, in order to turn a pixel into grayscale, we multiply the red value by 0.3, the green value by 0.59, and the blue value by 0.11. So now let's update this. If we wanna get the red value, we can say pixel i, because this is going into each of the pixels and getting the very first one. If we wanna to get to the green, we do pixel i plus one. If we want blue, i plus two. So now that we have that knowledge, let's go ahead and replace this and we'll do green, it's gonna be pixel i plus one. And then blue is pixel i plus two. Next, we're gonna change this from output and we'll change it to gray, which we declared at the very top of our function. Okay, so now we have the necessary value to convert each of these to grayscale. So now the last step is to update these. Pixel i equals gray, pixel i plus one equals gray, i plus two equals gray. Now another way to write this if you want to save a bit of time is do pixel i equals pixel i plus one equals pixel i plus two equals gray. And that way you can turn it all into one line and save a handful of characters. All right, so now we've gone through all of that pixel data. We've updated each pixel to be grayscale. Now the last step is to write that. Context put image data. And what are we putting? Well, we, we defined it right here. We got the image data, we updated each pixel to be grayscale, and now we're gonna put that image data back in. Image data. And again, where are the coordinates? And we'll leave it like so. So let's try this out now. Refresh. And now can you see that this one is grayscale? Very, very cool. And it's grayscale because we went through all of the pixels. We got the data of the image, we went through every pixel, and we updated each red, green, blue value to be gray and then we just reassigned that, that revised data. So now the next step is though, how can we combine these? So by default, it's grayscale, and then when you hover over this image, it becomes color. And to do that, we'll just take advantage of a little bit of CSS. We'll do this at the very top. And first, we're gonna get this image wrapper class. And here, I just wanna set some beginning uh, values. So this isn't crucial to the effect. We're mostly just positioning it so it looks good on the page position relative and cursor. When you hover over it, I wanna change the cursor to a pointer. So now it's placed there on the page with the next one below it. So now I wanna take this canvas and position it absolutely at the very top right here so that it's on top of it. Canvas, position, absolute, top is zero and left is zero. So now at this point, what we wanna do is when you hover over this, we wanna fade out the canvas. Canvas, hover, opacity, equals zero. Now we're successfully moving from grayscale to color, but I wanna make it look even better. I want to transition slowly from gray to red so it has a nicer effect. And we can take advantage of CSS transitions to do that. WebKit transition, and I'm just gonna say everything for now because you might wanna transition something later. Otherwise, when you're ready, you might wanna set something specific like opacity. And I'm gonna duplicate this for Microsoft, Opera, Mozilla, and then finally, we'll do the official form. So what this means is 
we're going to transition all properties that can be transitioned. In this case, it's just going to be opacity. And we're going to transition that to this value over the course of one second. Refresh. And now can you see over one second it transitions. If you want to make it slower, in WebKit, let's change it to five. One, two, three. And now it's fully color. But don't make people wait. Keep it to around one second. Okay, so that looks good. A nice effect. We did it fairly easily. You can save this script to a snippet program and use it whenever you need to. But the last thing is Internet Explorer doesn't support Canvas. So in this case, you're going to run this, and this is going to be false, in which case this function never runs. So how can we take care of IE? You have a couple options. One, you don't take care of IE. Is it crucial that Internet Explorer users see the grayscale to color? Maybe so, maybe not. I think most of the time, no, it's not crucial. And if you can get away with it, just leave it. There's nothing wrong with progressive enhancement. But if you're in a situation where IE must have that effect, you can do a slimmed down version of it by using either something like X Canvas, which is a JavaScript file that will bring Canvas support to Internet Explorer, or you can take advantage of those creepy Internet Explorer filters. And that's what we'll do in this case. If you must have IE support and get the image with an ID of CVS SRC, and by default, we're going to apply a filter and this will only be received by Internet Explorer. Now, I don't want you to think that I've memorized this. I don't think anyone on the planet ever has. Usually you just copy and paste. In this case, I'm reading it off of a sheet of paper though. Grayscale equals one. So Internet Explorer filters are, are creepy. They don't conform to any kind of standard. They can be cost intensive. So you wanna be careful when you use these. But this is a situation where if you have to have it, this is a way to turn an image into grayscale. So now at this point in Internet Explorer, by default, the image will be gray. And now when you hover over it, let's just get rid of a filter. Let me refresh the page here. There's black and white, and I hover over it, and now it's color. So we're not getting the nice transition there, but you still get the basic effect. And that's going to do it for today's quick tip. If you have any questions, improvements, or criticisms, just leave a comment at net.touchplus.com. I'm Jeffrey Way, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.